Section 12.3 is a little bit longer section. Uh, we are going to be talking about the regression equation. And this relates to uh, what we were talking about in section 12.2, the scatter plots. So if we have two variables, uh, the x and y variables, we often would like to model the relation as a line if we can. We want to find the line that describes the linear relationship the best. So we call this line the regression line of the data and the points on this line give a predicted value for that data. So the idea is we've got all these points. If it looks like a linear relationship, we can draw a line to represent that linear relationship. And then the points on that line are predicted values for the data. The least squares regression line, or what is called the line of best fit, is the line that minimizes the sum of the squared errors. So the error is the distance between the line and uh, the points on the scatter plot. So we represent this line as y with a hat over it, we'll call it y hat, I guess, equals b sub one times x plus b sub zero, where b sub one is equal to r, times s sub y over x sub, uh, s sub x, uh, that's the slope, and b sub zero is y minus b sub one times x, sorry I read that wrong, um, b sub zero is y bar minus b sub one times x bar, and this is the y intercept. So it's our normal slope intercept form, they're just using slightly different lettering uh, to represent that, and it stands for certain things. Uh, also remember x bar is the sample mean and then s sub x is the sample standard deviation of the explanatory variable x, y bar is the sample mean and s sub y is the sample standard deviation of the response variable y. So that's what those values mean and again the subscripts just tell us which variable we're dealing with. So we've always, we've known for quite a while that s is the sample standard deviation. So when we have that s sub y right here or the s sub x, or the s sub x right there. Uh, that tells us which variable we're dealing with at that point. We've also been dealing with this notation, the y bar and the x bar, uh, x bar more frequently where we've been talking about as the sample mean, uh, but that works for both of those uh, variables as well. In order to come up with a line of best fit or the regression line or the least squares regression line on our calculators, the first thing we will do is enter the explanatory variable uh, in the L1 column under our stats menu. Then we will enter the response variable into those values into the L2 list. Then we will press stat, use our right arrow to go over to calculate, and then we will select number four, the linear regression, and you can see uh, AX plus B, that's that same format of slope intercept form. So we'll use the down arrow to go uh, down and select calculate and that will give us our um, regression equation. For example 12.5, using the data from example 12.4, find the least squares regression line and draw the least squares regression line on the scatter diagram of the data. So first I'm going to put our uh, points back up here. We did this in our last lesson. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this on the calculator. Since we already did it earlier, you can copy that graph from your picture if you want, but those numbers are too small for me to read right now, so um, on your paper they're a little bit nicer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to stat, and we're going to go to edit, and we're going to put these into our list. So the first list, the um, the 35, the 50, the depth as the drilling begins, that's going to be 35 and 50. That goes in list 1, 75, 95, 120, 130, 145, 155, 160, 175, one, whoops, 185, and 190. Then we go over to list two. In list two, we have 5.88, 5 5.99, 6.74, 6.1, 7.47, 6.93, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18
uh, 6.89 and 7.9. So those are all the values. Notice they do match up, so they have the same number 12 in each of those. If we want to look at a scatter plot, the first thing we need to do is we're going to go second y equals. We're going to select this first option, hit enter. Then we're going to turn this scatter plot on, so hit enter again. The on is highlighted. When we go down, you can see the type, that's the scatter plot option. And notice the X list is L1 and the Y list is L2, and that's exactly what we want. The mark really doesn't matter. So that's how we want our scatter plot set up. Then the calculator will find the picture that is the best for us. So our picture is going to, the best picture will be if we go to zoom and we go down to number um, nine, zoom stat. And that gives us a picture, and we can see, we remember this from 12.2, that's, that's the, the kind of the picture we were seeing, and it looks basically linear. Everything is kind of in this range here going up like that. So that's what our scatter plot looks like. So we can see that it's basically linear, so that's a, a good thing. It definitely has that relationship. Now here's how we find that uh, line of best fit. We're going to go to stat again. We're going to go over to Calculate, highlight that menu, and we're going to go down to number four, the linear regression. We hit Enter. Notice the X list is L1, the Y list is L2. We don't need a frequency list, and we're going to go down to Calculate and hit Enter. And notice it gives us this answer. Uh, now, the answer it gives us says Y equals AX plus B, but then they give us an A value and they give us a B value. So our actual answer is y equals 0 0.012, if we round it off to three decimal places, times x, and then plus 5.527, uh, if we round that one off to two decimal places as well. So that is going to be our equation. We're going to take that and we're going to put it into um, our scatter plot. So we're going to go to y equals. And we're just going to type this in. So the y is already there. y1 equals uh, 0 0.012 times x and then plus 5.527. And when we hit graph now, the window is already set. But when we hit graph, notice our line going right through there. And that line is a pretty good estimate of those dots. Now, in my opinion, the line is maybe just a touch high. So here's what I'm going to do. There's actually a way to get all those because we rounded it off. But if we go back to y equals and clear that off, here's maybe going to give us a little better line. So the way we do that is we go to variables down here below the arrows. We go to statistics. Then we go over to EQ for the equation. And the very first option is the regression equation. And notice when it does this, it puts in all those decimal places that we rounded off. And now when we hit graph, I'm guessing we're going to get a slightly better line. And it's not a whole lot different, but it, I think it's shifted down just a little bit. And so that gives us maybe a little better line. Um, but again, when you're typing in your answer on the, on the computers, you're going to have to round it off to probably three decimal places. There's no way you can keep like 10 decimal places on your answer. So, But that's how we do that. Uh, and that is a picture of the uh, what the scatter plot looks like, and then also with the line of best fit drawn in there. So if we were drawing that line over here on our graph, uh, that's what that would look like. As I mentioned when we were doing this, uh, it's always a good idea to plot that scatter diagram or that scatter plot first. If the scatter plot indicates that there is a linear relationship between the two variables, which ours did, then it is reasonable to use a best fit line to make predictions for the y, given that x is within the domain of the x values of the sample data, but not necessarily for x values outside that domain. Then we talked about this earlier. This is called extrapolation. If we go outside of our domain, it's called interpolation. Uh, when we are using data values that are inside of our domain. And so that's what we want to focus on with these 
lines of best fit and any sort of a model actually interpolation is going to be a much better uh, a much better and more accurate estimate for us now the difference between the observed value of y and the predicted value of y which is y hat is the residual and sometimes this is referred to as an error because it is the um, the error or the dis the difference between the y value that was predicted and the y value that actually was observed and so that there's a difference there um, if everything lined up perfectly on a line our residuals would always be zero but in this case uh, and most of the time you're going to have some variation there it's not, not everything is always going to be perfectly on a line for example 12.6 we're going to use our uh, example our data from 12.4 and notice we have our equation here I kept one extra decimal place there it looks like on each of these part a we're going to predict the drilling time if drilling starts at 130 feet so all we do is we have our y and this is our prediction so we'd have y hat equals 0 0.0116 times the input value of 130 feet of depth because that's the x value and then plus 5.5273 so if we type that into our calculator 0 0.0116 times 130 close the parentheses plus 5.5273 we get an answer of 7.0 3, 3. That's our y hat answer. Okay. Now, is the observed drilling time at 130 feet above or below the average? And I think they're talking about the average from our line. So if we go back and we look at that table, 130 feet is 6.93. So the observed value was 6.93, that is less than or below our uh, y hat value. So it is below the average. The line gives us the average if we take all those points into consideration. So that is below the average. Then calculate the residual. And the residual, remember, is the... Um, So we're supposed to calculate the residual, and remember that the residual, we'll call it R, that's what they used earlier, is the um, observed value minus the predicted value. So in our case, the observed value was 6.93. The predicted value was 7.0353. So if we bring our calculator back up here, 6.93 minus 7.03. 5, 3, and we get negative 0 0.1053. Again, if the calculator asks or the computer asks you to round off to a certain spot, just round off to that spot, but that is our residual. So not a ton of difference, but there is some difference there. It's about, it's about one tenth uh, off. Example 12.7, we're supposed to interpret the slope and the y-intercept for the line obtained in our example 12.4. So here is our equation of our line. The slope, this is the slope. We'll just call it uh, m in this case because that's how we usually represent slope. Uh, in the, I think the formula, they call it b sub 0, but typically we use m for slope. Well, this is, this means that the drill time increases by uh, 0 0.0116 minutes for each uh, increase of one foot of depth and as far as the units that we're looking at here um, this is where we get the minutes okay the minutes are increasing based on the change in the number of feet of depth so that 0 0.0116 is feet per minute um, and that is 
what our slope stands for, our intercept. So again, normally we just call that B, and I think our problem, it calls it B1, but our intercept is the 5.5273. And this is uh, the drill time when starting at a depth of zero. Oops, zero feet. Okay, so if we would go back and we started the smallest one we have in our table is 35. But if we went back and we looked at um, zero feet, that would be approximately that 5.5273. So that's what the uh, slope and the intercept mean. And again, when they ask about interpreting a slope or an intercept, or they talk about interpreting something, they're asking you to explain in words what this number means. Not just tell what the number is, but what does that number actually mean in the context of what we've been given. Another note, if the least squares regression line is used to make predictions based on values of the explanatory value that are much larger or much smaller than the observed values, we say that the researcher is working outside the scope of the model. Never use a least squares regression line to make predictions outside the scope of a model because we can't be sure that our linear relationship, our relation will continue uh, to exist. And again, we talked about that earlier. That would be extrapolation, using the information that we have to try and predict way out uh, in either direction. And so we don't want to do that because uh, the, the data may change. I think we talked about cricket chirps or something like that and very early in the, in the semester. And we talked about, well, if it gets too hot or too cold, the crickets are going to die or they're going to go into hibernation. And so then your cricket chirps are going to become non-existent in that 15-second range that we were looking at. So it's important that we don't uh, generalize too far out from the data that we have. Now, related to this line of uh, regression is a correlation coefficient, which is uh, labeled with an R. This is an indicator, besides the scatter plot, to determine the strength of the relationship between the explanatory and responsive variables. So in our last lesson, we just looked at pictures, and we could say, yeah, this is a very linear, um, or there's no relationship, or there's a positive linear correlation. Um, but this is going to give us a number that actually measures the, the strength of our, of our relationship. So the linear correlation coefficient is a measure of that strength of the linear relationship between the two quantitative variables, so numbers. The sample correlation coefficient R is equal to, and then they give you this formula. Now, once again, we don't have to do that because the calculator figures this stuff out for us. We just have to be able to type the data in and then let the calculator do the math work. So, uh, but in the formula, X bar is the sample mean of the explanatory variable. Y bar is the sample mean of the response variable. S sub X is the sample standard deviation of the explanatory variable. S sub Y is the sample standard deviation of the response variable. And then N is the number of individuals in the sample. So all those same, uh, the same terminology we've been using previously. Properties of the linear correlation coefficient. First of all, R is a unitless measure. Um, so there's no units to consider. There's no inches, no feet, no hours, nothing like that. Number two, R is always between negative one and positive one. And we'll talk about what those two numbers mean in a little bit. Number three, positive values of R correspond to positive relations. So in other words, as one value increases, the other value also increases. Number four, negative values of R correspond to negative relations. And remember from 12.2, that means as one variable increases, the other variable will be decreasing. Number five, the closer R is to positive one, the stronger the positive relation. If your R value is exactly one, that means your dots for your scatter plot are all exactly on a line, and that line would have a positive slope. Uh, number six, when R equals positive one, oh, I just gave that away, there is a perfect positive relation. In other words, they're all perfectly on a line. Number seven, the closer R is to negative one, the stronger the negative relation. Number eight, I didn't give it away this time. When R equals negative one, 
there is a perfect negative relation. In other words, they would all be perfectly on a straight line and uh, the line would have a negative slope because as one is increasing, the other variable will be decreasing. Number nine, the closer R is to zero, the less of a linear relation we have, either positive or negative. So it could be like a uh, positive 0.1 or a negative 0.1. Those are very uh, scattered and not really very linear relations. Um, and so that, again, doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, the closer it is to zero, the, the less uh, strength that linear relation has. 12.8, determine the linear correlation coefficient, R, uh, for example, 12.4, and interpret R in the context of, starting, of the starting drilling depth and the time it takes to drill five feet. There it is. We hadn't had that yet, but that number is always, it's giving us the time it takes to drill five feet. And that was probably in our very first example, but I didn't remember it. Now, fortunately for this problem, we have already entered the data. If we go to stat and edit, we know our data is already in here. And we've actually already done the work of doing, of finding our uh, line of regression. We go over stat and calculate and down to number four. But at this point, oh, if we go down, at this point, we just get that equation again. Now, here's how we set up the calculator. And once you do this one time, it's already going to be set up. Um, in fact, your phones may already be set up. The calculators that you use for the test may or may not be set up for this. But here's how we set this up to get the R value. We go second, zero. And second, zero brings us to the catalog. If you see there at the top, it says catalog. And then we're going to push the inverse button, which I think is this one right here. And we are looking for something that says diagnostic on. So we're going to go down here through the Ds, since that's what that inverse button was. And we've gotten to it, the diagnostic on button. And we're going to choose that and hit enter. And then we're going to hit enter again. And notice the calculator tells us, OK, now the diagnostics are on. So now when we go to stat and we go over to calculate and we go down to number four and we hit enter and we go down and we hit calculate again. Notice we get that linear equation, but we also get some extra information. The extra information is right here. And this is the one specifically that we're looking at, the R value. The R value in this case is 0 0.7728. Now remember, the closer that number is to 1, the stronger our positive relation is. So we would probably estimate uh, from this number, I mean, we definitely have a positive relation because it's a positive R value, but we also have a fairly strong positive relationship. Um, to get a really strong positive relationship, you probably need to be up close between 0.9 and, and 1. Um, so 0.77 isn't super, super strong, but it is you know, a moderately strong uh, positive relation there for this problem. 
So that's what the R squared is telling us. 12.9, determine the coefficient of determination R squared, for example, 12.4, and interpret R squared in the context of the starting drilling depth and the time it takes to drill five feet. Well, we already did that. It was just about 60. So that tells us that about 60% of our uh, points are explained by the data or by the, the uh, line of best fit, the regression equation. And so again, that's more than half of them. So that's, that's a, fairly, a fairly good descriptive, descriptive line. Note, to determine R squared for the linear regression model, simply square the value of the linear cor correlation coefficient. So if we pull our calculator back up here just to test this, notice that our R value is 0.7728. I'm just going to take 0.7728, and I'm going to square it. And notice we do get that 0.5972. So that's, you know, if you use the exact value, it would come out exactly, um, but even using four decimal places, we're getting a good, a good estimate there. For example, 1210, according to data obtained from the Statistical Abstract of the United States, the correlation between the percentage of the female population with a bachelor's degree and the percentage of births to unmarried mothers since 1990 is 0 0.940. Does this mean that a higher percentage of females with bachelor's degrees causes a higher percentage of births to unmarried mothers? Well, <clears throat> if you think about that, uh, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, people getting bachelor's degrees, uh, females getting bachelor's degrees does not cause more births to unmarried mothers. Um, so just because there is a relationship between two things, like a positive relationship, because as one of them goes up, the other one does, does not mean that one is causing the other or even that they're related to each other. So we have to keep that in mind uh, that just because two things kind of follow a similar pattern doesn't mean that they're related to each other uh, directly. Example 1211 is an illustration of this. Ice cream sales and crime rates have a very high correlation. Does this mean that local government should shut down all ice cream shops in order to battle crime? Well, no. Obviously, what's going on here is when are ice cream sales the highest? Well, in the summer when it's warm and the weather is nice. Um, crime? Well, it's going to be probably more likely for a person to commit a crime when it's not miserable weather and it's maybe not raining or whatever, um, rather than trouncing around in the middle of winter or something like that. So does that mean the local government should shut down all the ice cream shops to try and fight crime? No, just because, again, there is a correlation between these two things does not mean that there is a direct relation between them. That is the end of section 12.3, and you've got those eight graded problems to work on. Make sure you practice your work with the calculators there, and again, if you get stuck on any of those, please make sure that you uh, send me a message, and, and uh, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can on that.